it's Josephine from The Point Shop. I'm at the Ballet Institute of San Diego, and I did a point shoe hack with Sasha, who is a soloist at San Francisco Ballet. What kind of point shoes are you in right now? So these are the block Euro stretch. Okay, so this is the split sole point shoes. And a lot of people think that the split sole is completely split, like there's nothing here. Yeah. It's like a hard sole on yeah. the inside, and it's quite thick. Yeah, it's thick and actually pretty hot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's actually pretty hard on the inside. So a lot of people think like, oh, you have no support right here. But mm -hmm. it's really just the outer sole that it's not supposed to give you support anyway. Right. And they split it so that the shoe will shrink. And oh my gosh, you guys, you need to see her feet right now. <laughs> Even just the shape of her foot is high profile and high arch. It's insane. And then when you point, like she bends, oh my gosh, in half. So this type of foot in every other point shoe is probably going to be really baggy at the end, right? Yeah, when I was younger, it used to just like, always around the arch would be baggy, the heel would be baggy, and I always felt like my foot never looked good. And with dancers that have really flexible feet, that have a very high arch and very flexible ankles, they tend to shrink in their point shoes. When you stand on flat in point shoes, it feels like it's the right size, but when you go up on point, everything is baggy and it looks like your shoes are way too big for you. That would happen with almost every point shoe that Sasha was wearing before until she discovered the block Euro stretch. Back when I was dancing in Dutch National, they had these lying around and I was like, oh, these are so cool. Yeah. Like, I put them on and I was like, okay, these are it. This is it. I didn't even like try anything else. Like, hey, this is perfect. My feet look great. It bends exactly where I want it to. The shoe feels like a slipper on my foot. The stretch satin is like the miracle. It stretches and it has elastic inside the satin. When you point your foot, it naturally shrinks in the arch, and then it shrinks in the satin, it gets smaller with your feet. Yeah, it's nice, sort of like it moves with you. Are there any customs on the shoe? Not at all, not at all, nothing. So the stock shoe is actually the most consistent yeah. because it's the same way every time. If you get a maker, one person makes a lot of the shoe, as opposed to a stock shoe, there's like multiple hands that it goes through and it uses some machinery. Right. So it's a little bit more exact and a little bit more consistent. The one thing I will say though, is that because this is elastic, the satin, when you fray the tip of your shoe, it, yeah, like it somehow comes pulls off. up, it starts like pulling up a little bit. Yeah. And keeping it on, it's a little slippery because it moves with the shoe. Mm -hmm. So I usually cut it off and then I darn the edge mm -hmm. just so it doesn't start fraying. You're just doing it to grab. Yeah, to grab the, the satin. Yeah, exactly. She cuts the satin off the tip. But remember, because this is a stretch satin, there's elastic inside the satin. So if you wear out your satin here, it'll start to rise and then it'll get kind of ugly because the satin will kind of stop right here. So the only reason why she darns her point shoes is to grab that satin, make sure that it doesn't rise up. You need like little nail scissors, you know, because they're like sharper. Oh, so you really go down all the way to the top of the um, chain. Yeah, like so. So I do my darning thread and I usually do it double. Mm -hmm. Just so it's a little thicker and also it can help from slipping. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so. It through. Start quite low already. Yeah. Because like th these little sections, when you PK on the point, can be a little slippery. This satin is pretty slippery too. Yeah, that's why I cut it off. Yeah. So you could technically leave it like this, but eventually it kind of starts to pull up as you wear the shoe. While the needle's like sort of half out, I do a little wrap around the needle. And then pull through. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's a thick thread. A lot of people darn their point shoes for different reasons. A lot of it is longevity. A lot of it is finding the edge a little bit more. Yeah. But your sole purpose of darning is to keep the satin intact. Yeah. Yeah, so then I just do that the whole way around. I try and not do too close together and not too far apart, just a nice little I'm pretty fast at sewing. I think because because I only do like a few stitches on the ribbon and on the elastic and then the one round of the darning, I can sew one pair and like, if I'm like in a hurry, I can do it in like 20 minutes. I'm done. And because you're not really using this for any other purpose other than to keep the satin on, you're not going all the way around. No.
So the same thread that she uses to darn her point shoes, she uses to darn her ribbons and the elastics. Because she's so flexible, she has to double up on her elastic. And she really just puts like three or four stitches on there so that she doesn't have to do too much. One of the coolest ribbon hacks, and I've never seen this before, but a really good way to get the right length is you do from your heel to your knee. Oh! oh. And like till about like, like the top of your knee here, there. That's so smart. And so it's sometimes a little bit longer, but it's better to have it a little bit longer than not long enough. Absolutely. I like my ribbons a little longer. I get nervous when I need to suddenly untie them and I can't because the ribbon is too short. I think that was a really cool trick for people who just buy rolls of ribbon. So it was nice to see her hacks. And it was also a testament to how strong she is as well because she is making this shoe last a pretty long time.